Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to the next lesson in our C++ series. In this lesson, we're going to be talking about composition as well as something related known as aggregation. And sometimes those terms are used a little bit interchangeably, but I want to talk about how they're different. So with that said, let's go ahead and dive in and talk a little bit about this idea of composition. Now, just to give a concrete example, previously we've been talking about the concept of inheritance. So what I've created on the left here is two different defined types here. One's just a point 2D and the other is a character class. Maybe we're representing some video game character or something of that sort. Now, previously the tool that we have learned about is inheritance. So that is to say, if I wanted a character to have some position in the world, one way to do that would be in fact to say publicly inherit here. And I could go ahead and compile this and we see that it compiles. And again, just to remind on inheritance in C++, our structure would look something like this, where we have our point 2D and we would be deriving a new subclass here, character, which would get the characteristics of point 2D, namely the X and the Y position. Now, if you go ahead and review some of those lessons or just think about this, remember inheritance is a is a relationship. So that would mean that a character is also a point 2D. Now, if we just go ahead and think about this, this relationship doesn't really make sense. Um, sure, this was one way to give the attributes, meaning an X and a Y position to a character, but relationally it doesn't really make sense. That is, if you just sort of talked about or worked this out, you wouldn't say that, yeah, characters are point 2Ds. In fact, this example doesn't really make sense. So our other tool instead is to avoid inheritance in this situation and use composition. Okay, and this is something that we've actually already been doing in our code here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and undo these changes here. And as an example of composition, we'll just look at a point 2D, which is composed of an X and a Y integer. So that is, we are making this type here. And for those of you with a C programming background, this might be familiar where we say a struct is a composite type made up of multiple other types. That is an X and a Y position here. But these two variables compose and make up a point 2D. Okay, so that's the idea of composition. We say that something has a and usually this is referring to the actual member variables, okay? So that well, a way to represent this is just to write point 2D here and just represent the variables here, X and Y, as the member variables here. Now, with composition, there's a little subtlety here, and I'll go ahead and um, I'll talk about aggregation in a moment here, uh, but it's the idea that the lifetime of X and Y is also tied to this object point 2D. So for example, the constructor or destructor in this case, the constructor would be responsible for constructing or initializing values of X and Y and the destructor would be responsible for reclaiming X and Y here. Now, since these are primitive types here, that is done trivially. But if we had some array or something, we would have to free that memory in that way. So let's go ahead and modify this character here by going ahead and composing it of a point 2D. Okay, so a point 2D, and again, this could be the uh, position, and maybe we'd have other things like point 2D, the direction that the character is moving, and so on. So now a character is composed of two point 2Ds here. Okay, so character has a. Uh, point 2D. In fact, it has two of them. Okay, so that's the main distinguishment when folks talk about composition and inheritance. Okay, now I want to talk about this third one that is also a type of composition. And I think when folks learn it, I know I've certainly taught it this way. I usually don't explicitly call out aggregation, but I think it's also important to understand what it is. Now this is also a has a relationship, but the difference is the lifetime is not necessarily, um, and I'll go ahead and put this necessarily tied to the 
object. Okay, so what exactly does that mean when I talk about aggregation? So that's the difference versus composition here. Uh, let me go ahead and modify our character here. And let's go ahead and say we have some character here and maybe they have a uh, home or a base or something in a game here. Now the difference is I'm just going to specify this point 2D, but I'm just going to create a reference to it. Okay, so that means this is an alias for something that has to exist. So the reference to the home. And then when I create this character, we'll go ahead and pass in some sort of reference, point 2D. I'm just going to call it the reference here. And I'll go ahead and sign our uh, member variable here, ref home to whatever the reference is that we have. Okay, so let me go ahead and compile this just to make sure that this works here. And oops, it appears we are going to get a compiler error here. So let me go ahead and just make this a little bit bigger here so I can show you what's going on. And it's saying uninitialized reference member in struct point 2D. So remember with references or um, our values here, we have to make sure that they get initialized. We can't just leave this alone. For example, they could not call the right constructor or whatever. So the way to get around this is to, in fact, use a member initializer list to ensure that that reference uh, does get assigned when the object is created. Okay, so now if I go ahead and compile this, again, we have this reference here to some other object that exists. So let's go ahead and just set this up here. Let's say if we create a character, I'll use me as an example. And well, I could create some uh, point 2D here, for example, if I wanted. But what I really want to do is create that uh, outside here. So point 2D here. Uh, and I'm just going to say some point. And that's what I'm going to pass into my constructor here. OK, so let me go ahead and recompile this. It compiles fine. So the point here with aggregation is while our character still has a reference here of this type here, some point here that's my home base, you know, just some 2D location, the actual lifetime of this object here isn't necessarily tied to this one here. For example, just to make this even more clear, I could make this a global variable, right? So that's in a different scope or a different block scope. It's global. It's going to exist as long as the program does versus this character here, which again, just to make super explicit, let's just put that in another uh, function here just to show that it's in a totally different scope here. And maybe I call this function in our main and I compile it and it's just fine here. So again, the scopes aren't uh, tied together. This object might go away. In fact, if I go ahead and run this, it runs just fine, but the reference to this point uh, exists elsewhere. Okay, so that's the difference between the aggregation. We're still composing our character of something, it's just that it lives outside. So I hope that also clears up this idea here of uh, composition versus aggregation, which I think was often not talked about. Most folks just kind of lump composition together and talk about the uh, is a versus has a relationship. But again, since we're C++ programmers and we think about things like lifetime, uh, we want to distinguish between these two different concepts. So I'll go ahead and leave it at that. We've in fact been using composition quite a bit. Again, any time where we've been using member variables inside of our classes have been examples. But aggregation usually arises when you have uh, references that you're putting inside your class or perhaps pointers because their lifetime might exist uh, elsewhere and, and be taken care of in different uh, objects or be global variables uh, as demonstrated here. So folks, I hope you enjoyed that lesson. I hope that helps you keep some of these concepts together and just gives you some vocabulary for how you're talking about the actual design of your classes. It is an important thing to think about. And typically what we're thinking about, again, if I actually jump back here, is our hierarchies. So we try to keep our hierarchies flat, that is not create these big um, hierarchies here, if we can get away with just composing our objects and having them have a data member instead of perhaps creating this sort of uh, inheritance hierarchy, which can be often harder to remove. So again, that's the motivation and why or where we'll think about things like composition versus inheritance if you're asked or doing something for design.
So folks, I hope this was helpful. I hope you enjoyed this lesson as we continue to talk about classes in our classes series here. And if you've been enjoying this, if this video was helpful, make sure to give a like, make sure to give a subscribe so you can see the rest of the videos. And that's my pitch as always, and we'll see you next time.